before we get started, I just wanted you to see that we have a dinosaur in our backyard. Hey guys, wanted to read to you today from chapter four from Countdown, a novel by Deborah Wiles. When we last left Franny, she was on the street and heavens to Murgatroyd, who has shown up but Uncle Otz. Uncle Otz weaves across the Moor's yard, where he has, no doubt, just accosted them with the latest civil defense literature, telling them how to keep our country safe and how to keep themselves alive if our country is attacked. Fall in line, troops, he barks. He stuffs his pamphlet into his satchel and points at us with his arm like a bayonet. He's wearing his World War II civil defense helmet on his head and his World War I medals on his chest. Fall in line! Twelve kids, previously scattered all across Napoli Drive and meandering home on a Friday afternoon, don't know what to do. What would you do if somebody started yelling at you like that? My face is scarlet with embarrassment. What is he doing? whispers Margie as Uncle Otz steps into the street and strides towards us. I don't know, I hiss. I am glued to my spot on the road. Even Jack sits. Come to order, yells Uncle Otz. Tom West makes a run for it. Deserter! Uncle Ott screams. Yellow bellied coward! While his attention is diverted, I grab Margie and pull her behind the enormous honeysuckle bush beside the Ramsey's mailbox. We peek through the honeysuckle branches and I telegraph Uncle Ott. Go home, go home! But Uncle Ott stands in the middle of Napoli Drive with his hands on his hips and his feet apart, like General Patton in front of Third Army daring anyone to move. Kids are frozen in place. I can picture the dinners in their houses tonight, the talk around the table, all about the Chapmans who moved on the corner of Allentown and Coolridge two years ago, and their uncle, who's gone crazy. Don't go to their house, anyone. He might be dangerous. What have we got here? Barks Uncle Otz. A bunch of soldiers or a bunch of spies? Please stop. I telegraph to Uncle Otz. Who's behind that bush? He screams this, and the veins in his wobbly neck stand out like some grotesque comic book monster, and my legs turn to jelly. Show yourselves, spies! A crow calls from the yellow-leaved trees, and another answers it. A fat cloud covers the sun. I can hear Margie's breathing, hard and scared, next to me. I don't know what to do. Drew does. He walks up to Uncle Otz, who towers over him. He leans far to the left with the weight of his satchel, but he still manages to calmly salute Uncle Otz and say, At ease, Sergeant. It's a line I've heard Daddy use a hundred times, and it works. Uncle Otz peers down at Drew and blinks. The sun peeks out from behind the clouds as he slowly, painfully recognizes Drew and salutes back. At ease, Private, he says softly. His shoulders slump, and tears crowd his eyes. Kids come alive again. They start snickering, even laughing at the old man standing in the middle of the road, wearing a battered old helmet and spouting like a madman. I telegraph them to stop it, to leave him alone. As they walk around him in wide circles, as if he has leprosy. Uncle Otz hugs Drew like he hasn't seen him for years, and Drew lets himself be hugged. He and Uncle Otz walk up Napoli, turn right at the corner onto Cool Ridge, and lumber toward home. Jack brings Drew a pine cone, and Drew tosses it, and Jack scampers after it, happy. I shove my hair out of my face and sigh. <sighs> Whoa, says Margie. I can't answer. I can hardly breathe. Then Margie says, He's really gone psycho, Franny. Thanks. Sorry, Franny, but he's really weird now. He's scary weird. I know, I know. What's wrong with him? Nothing's wrong with him, I want to scream. But that's not true. I don't know, I say. A fat blue jay lands on the top branch of the honeysuckle bush and eyeballs us. Come on, let's go, says Margie. I shake my head. Not yet. Why not? I just can't. I don't want them to make fun of me. I'm not going to be the laughing stock of the neighborhood, if not the whole school on Monday. Well, he's a nut, Franny. 
He's not a nut! I swallow hard to keep the tears away. And if you were really my friend, you'd understand that. And you'd understand why I'm embarrassed to death right now. Margie considers this. The October air is thick between us. I've got to go home she says. My mom's taking me to the twins' shoe shop, and I'm getting my first pair of penny loafers. Penny loafers. I stare at my brand new black Buster Browns with the velvet sides and the long skinny laces. Mom says they are sensible school shoes. Good for you, I tell Margie, but I don't mean it. See ya, Pixie. Bye. I have a little sinking spell right there behind the Ramsey's honeysuckle bush. What's worse? Your best friend doesn't feel like your best friend anymore? Or the whole neighborhood thinks your family is an embarrassment? Or maybe it's worse that you wouldn't acknowledge your uncle, Franny. Maybe I'll just stay here, hidden behind this bush forever. Oof. Not really an easy chapter. What do you think is going on with Uncle Otz? And what do you think would be worse? Tough decision. See you later.